Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Dr. Strangelove, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Starring Peter Sellers, George C. Scott, Sterling Hayden, Keenan Wynn, Slim Pickens, what kind of a name is that anyways, but let's move on, Peter Bull, Tracy Reed, and James Earl Jones, directed by Stanley Kubrick. Now, I reviewed Kubrick before with The Shining in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Confessionably, I've never seen A Clockwork Orange, which... I have yet to get there, but I have seen this movie before once, but do I remember too much of what happens in the movie? Not in particular. So let's just get into this movie and let's see how much I remember or understand this plot. This, the year is 1942 at the Berpolsen U.S. Air Force Base somewhere in the continental USA, the eccentric Brigadier General Jack D. Ripper, or as I thought Jack the Ripper, played by Sterling Hayden, orders the 34 nuclear-armed B-52s of the 843rd Bomb Wing po past their failsafe points while they norm where they point normally hold awaiting possible orders to proceed into the Soviet airspace and enjoy the choice and I enjoy the choice that Stanley Kubrick made, which was filming this movie in black and white, while the score is very iconic. Jack also tells personnel on the base that the U.S. and USSR are, yeah, that's right, and have entered into a shooting war. And the fact that they, this is talking about taking place in World War II, a little over 20 years after the year of 1964, which is when this movie came out, which was a little too soon. But I didn't mind, like, World Trade Center coming out five years after 9-11. And I'm talking about the movie, by the way, folks. Was, which was also a little too soon. But again, I didn't mind. In the war room at the Pentagon, Air Force General Buck Turgidson, played by George C. Scott from Patton, which was his best work. But I reviewed in the original Firestarter and Exorcist 3, sadly, Briefs President Merkin Muffley, played by the Pink Panther's Peter Sellers, as well as the spoof version of Casino Royale, also sadly, about the attack that General Ripper ordered, the, and the acting in this movie was surprisingly pretty good in this movie. And someday I should do a Stanley Kubrick filmography retrospective, because he's one of the th those original directors that has a great vision. Like in The Shining, when I reviewed that film back in 2019, even though that was adapted by a Stephen King book. Although a nuclear attack should require presidential authority to be initiated, Ripper, using Plan R, an emergency war plan, enabling a senior officer to launch a retaliation strike against the Soviets if everyone in the normal chain of command, including the president, has been killed during a sneak attack. And I like the way this movie was shot, as there's great shots from start to finish. Plan R was intended to discourage the Soviets from launching a decapitation strike against the president in Washington to disrupt U.S. command and control and stop an American nuclear counterattack, which is intense for sure, and I like the scenes in the war room, as they excited me the entire time. Turgidson tries to convince Muffley to take advantage of the situation to eliminate the Soviets, as a threat by launching a full-scale attack, which could scare the heck out of people back in 1964, but it did scare me during this viewing, for sure. Turgidson believes that the United States is in a superior str strategi str what's this word? Strategi strategic position, and a first strike against the Soviet Union would destroy 90% of their missiles before they could re retaliate resulting in a victory uh, for the U.S. with acceptable American casualties of no more than 10 to 20 million, 20 million killed tops, depending on the breaks, and the cinematography is quite tremendous in this movie. He is rebuked when Muffley instead admits the Soviet ambassador, played by Peter Bull, to the war room, contacts Soviet Premier Dmitry Kissoff on the hotline, hotline excuse me, and insists on giving the Soviets all the information necessary to shoot down the American planes before they can carry out their strikes, which is a great in but intense scene. Group Captain Lionel Mandrake, also played by Peter Sellers, an, AR an RAF exchange officer, 
serving as General Ripper's executive officer, realizing that there has been no attack on the U.S., when he turns on the radio and hears pop music instead of self civil defense alerts, and how does Peter Sellers play three different characters, which is a better choice in this movie than, say, Eddie Murphy in the Nutty Professor movies from the 1990s and Norbit, which are terrible films, I'll say, but Peter Sellers does it here for all the right choices. When Mandrake reveals this to Ripper, and Ripper refuses to recall the wing, Mandrake announces that he will issue the recall on his own authority, but only Ripper knows the three-letter code necessary for recalling the bombers and locks the two of them in his office, which is sad when people can lie about things like that and just get away with it, but it's unfortunately true. Mandrake tries to convince Ripper to give up the three-letter code, and the psychotic Rip Ripper refuses and rambles on that communists have a plan to sap and purify the precious bodily fluids of the American people with flori floridated water. Or no, let me say this right. Flored floridated, floridated water. I'll say that. And a theory that occurred to them during sexual intercourse in which he believed to be the cause of his post Coital fatigue, and again, it's sad in politics today. People will do whatever they want and just get away with it in general, but the movie is well done that way, in my opinion. Over the phone, an unseen and drunken Kristoff, or Kissoff, excuse me, reveals the Soviet ambassador that their, their country has installed an active doomsday device, which will automatically destroy all human and animal life on Earth if a nuclear attack were to hit the Soviet Union, which was quite funny to me. I enjoyed this as a satire. The Doomsday device is operated by a network of computers and has been conceived as the ultimate deterrent. As a safeguard, it cannot be deactivated or it will set itself off because it's hardware. And programs have been configured in such a way that at an attempt uh, of its deactivation would be recognized as sabotage, which is pretty scary in life as well as this movie. The Doomsday Weapon is described as based on Cobalt Torium G. This was inspired by the real idea, idea of a Cobalt, cobalt Bomb, excuse me, conceived by nuclear pioneer Leo Slard, founder of Council for a Living livable world and again that's scary stuff for a pg rated movie remember this is a pg rated movie back in the 1960s around 64. according to the soviet ambassador life on earth's sur surface will be extinct in 10 months and was made as a low co cost alternative to the bomb race which is something i'm afraid of in politics today but the movie does it better than in real life the president now calls Dr. Strangelove, a.k.a., let me see if I'm saying this right. This is going to be a weird one. Merk Werdergelieb? I don't know if I said that right. Please forgive me. A former Nazi and strategy expert played by Sellers in his third world. As, again, he does better work here than Eddie Murphy ever did in, with that, in my opinion. The wheelchair-bound Strangelove is a type of mad scientist who's eccentrics include a severe case of alien hand syndrome so that his right hand clan clad in an ominous black leather glove occasionally attempts to strangle strange love or make the nazis salute no one in the room acts that this is unusual which i kind of find strange myself strange love also slips in addressing the president as either me main president or main Ferrer, which is, I think German, which is a little weird in, in America in general, but I know it's a German salute. Strange Love explains the principles behind the Doomsday device, which he says is simple to understand, credible, and convincing, and his acting made it convincing. So kudos to Peter Sellers for the acting choice. He also points out that a Doomsday device, kept secret, has no value to deterrent the Soviet ambassador admitting that his government had installed it a few days before that they were going to announce it publicly to the world because Kissoff loves surprises, and to be honest, I hate surprises in general. 
but this will end the, with a surprise. U.S. Army paratroopers sent by the president arrive at Burpleson to arrest General Ripper, which is a good thing to do because he started a, to fire a missile to begin with, which serves him right. And because Ripper has warned his men that the enemy might be attacked disguised as American soldiers, the base is secretary, security, I mean, forces, and Ripper himself with the .50 caliber M1919 Browning machine gun kept in a golf bag, his golf bag. Now, the reason I'm saying this kind of weird is because I'm no expert on guns. I will admit that out of the way. Open fire on them, and believe me, war based on the other war movies was hell. After a fierce firefight, the army forces win the battle and gain access to the base, and Ripper, fearing torture to extract the recall, Code commits suicide, which serves him right for sure. But I like the characters as well as him, so I didn't wish death upon him, despite he filed a missile, fired a missile in the first place. Colonel Bat Guano, played by Keenan Wynn, shoots his way into Ripper's office, but suspects that Mandrake whose uniform he does not recognize is leading a mutiny of de deviated pervert, preverts and proceeds to arrest him, which should happen to begin with. Mandrake convinces Guano that he has to call the president to tell him the recall code, which he, dedu he deduced from Ripper's desk bef blot blotter doodles to be based on the, in the initials for the phrases peace, on earth and purity of essence and the way this movie was shot commands your screen attention since office phone connections have been knocked out by the finding of the base mandrake is forced to use a payphone to try to contact the president which is fine but felt convenient not having the correct change f to place a long distance call to the pentagon mandrake persuades guanu to shoot a Coca-Cola vending machine to get the change out of it, and eventually is able to to forward the likely code combinations to Str Strategic Air Command, which was actually funny to me. The correct recall, OPE, or OPE for short, is you shoot the planes, and those that have been shot, not been shot down return to base, except for one, and why does it not work? did kind of bothered me a bit. Its radio and fuel tanks were damaged by a Soviet and aircraft missile, with the results that the plane is neither able to receive the recall code, nor to reach its primary or secondary target, where at the urging of the US president, the, U the Soviets have concentrated all available defenses, which makes perfect sense on the crew's own initiative, and losing a fuel the plane proceeds to fly at a low level under a radar to a closer target of opportunity, which also makes sense as they start their bomb running the damaged B-52 bombs. Bay doors will not open. And aircraft major TJ King Kong, played by Slim Pickens. It remind me, what kind of name is that again? Moving on. Going down to the bomb bay to open them himself which feels very unsafe particularly since he's dealing with the bomb he succeeds just as the plane reaches its target and one of the nuclear bomb falls with kong still sitting on it which is again very dangerous he straddles the bomb and rides it to the ground like a rodeo cowboy whooping and hollering hollering excuse me and waving his cowboy hat which was funny the bomb explodes triggering the doomsday machine which is sad, a sad but is unfortunately the truth back in the war room dr strangelove recommends to the president that a select group of i don't know about two hundred thousand or more people be relocated into a deep mine shaft where the nuclear fall cannot reach them so that the u.s can be repopulated afterwards as I was scared for the Americans in this movie and was worried whether they lived or died. Because of space limitations, Strange Love suggests a gender ratio of 10 fem females on each male, to each male, excuse me, with the women selected for their sexual characteristics 
and the men selected on the basis of their physical strength and intellectual cop capabilities and importance in business and government, which did feel weird and uncomfortable. General Turgidson rants that the Soviets will likely create an even better bunker than the U.S. and argues the, that America must not allow a mine shop gap, which is true in life. Meanwhile, the Soviet ambassador retreats to a corner of the war room and starts taking pictures with a spy camera disguised as a pocket watch or a pocket watch excuse me which is pretty clever a visibly excited dr strangelove bolts out of his wheelchair shouting mean fairer or something like that i can walk and that was the best line in reveal in the most hilarious kind of way abruptly the film ends with the barrage of nuclear explosions accompanied by vera lynn's famous world war ii song we'll meet again anyways and the climax was a surprise but sad to learn that people died tragically in a satire now it's time for my rating i'll give this movie a 8.8 .8 out of 10. the acting is well done by actors whom i've seen in other things that i don't necessarily like despite i've never seen the pink panther with peter sellers maybe one day i'll get there but sadly i have seen the remakes which not worth talking about in this show and the fact Peter Sellers plays three different characters for much better choices than years later with Eddie Murphy and Stanley Kubrick has quite the vision for this movie like he did with The Shining the cinematography is well done as this movie is well shot and very well made with the choice of being shot in black and white the whole the whole movie was a very good choice from Stanley Kubrick as this movie was sad but at the same time pretty intense this is a great political movie that today people should watch for that reason alone, as this is a great satire for the political world, and this is a solid recommendation, as people should see this movie today as well. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with Gandhi, with Ben Kingsley, and until then, we'll meet again.